people involved in this project, but first, James Hurst takes a look at F-35's journey so far. Well, the first four F-35 jets have just touched down here at RAF Marham. It's been a very long journey for them today, flying thousands of miles across the Atlantic Ocean. They set off from South Carolina and the base that they've been training at a few hours ago, but they've finally arrived here for a start, a brand new chapter in 617 Squadron's history. In a few moments time, I'll be talking to a few of the key people involved in this project, but first, James Hurst takes a look back at the F-35's history. It is a significant investment, but I'm afraid in defence nothing comes cheaply. But uh, it is a cutting-edge uh, platform. The the F-35 obviously moves us to, into a new ball game in terms of information gathering, in terms of the nature of the platform that we're buying. So I think when you talk to the ground staff here, when you talk to the pilots, I think it is fair to say that this is a step in the right direction. It's something that we've been working towards for a very long time, and it's just fantastic to be here to see them arrive, uh, having travelled all the way from the US. They, they are things of beauty. It has to be said. Does it send out a statement as well, though, with regard to Britain's? Yes, I think it does. I think it does highlight the fact that you know we often talk about defence as if it's a, it's a case of doom and gloom, but that's not true. We, the, the investments that we're making in capabilities and in capacity is significant, and the fact that we have these F-35s landing in the United Kingdom, the fact that we'll be doing sea trials on the carrier off the east coast of the US uh, in the early autumn, just really make a statement that the United Kingdom has got a significant defence capability, is really willing to play its part in the world, is willing to meet its obligations within NATO, so yes, it does send out a statement. And finally, for our viewers in this part of the world, I suppose it also sends out a statement about the future of Marum. Uh, it really does. It, it really does. The, the investment is, is approaching half a billion. Uh, that's an investment which is necessary in order to keep the F-35 in place here and to maintain and, and look after them for the next 35, 40 years, because this type of investment is a huge investment, but obviously it's there for the long term as well. So we had to make sure that we had the facilities here which were up to the standard expectations of a platform this, uh, such as this and I, I have to say the enthusiasm at the base is, is, uh, is quite contagious. They are fantastically good. They are the next generation of capability, not only stealthy, able to access airspace um, uh, at our uh, time and place of our choosing, but also a tremendous uh, sensing platform, tremendous information capabilities, able to understand so much better what's happening in the battlefield, giving us that real uh, superiority over our potential adversaries. It was obviously great news for the RAF and for the Navy, but particularly it's good news for Marum, isn't it, as well? I mean, I guess this safeguards the future of the space for many years to come. 
Well, uh, RAF Marham is going to be the F-35's uh, home base for decades to, to come. So it is great news for Marham. We've put a tremendous amount of investment uh, into this base. Uh, it's been a key base for the Royal Air Force for many years. Uh, and now it will be a base for both the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy uh, people who are operating the F-35. Um, so a great place and a great location. And we're always tremendously well supported in Norfolk. Hmm. I can turn to you. Um, what kind of statement does this send out? We hear a lot of doom and gloom about defence at the moment. Does this send out a statement of intent that you know, Britain does supply its troops with the very best? I don't see any doom and gloom in this at all. I see this as a fantastic uh, new chapter in 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 our in, in our military capability and history, and it's a real shared endeavour. So actually, what it says in many ways is that UK defence is operating in a stronger and more confident manner, because rather than uh, what we may have seen in the past, two services trying to outdo each other, you've got two services powerfully coming together to operate fifth generation uh, carrier strike capability, combat air power, uh, able of deploying around the world from land or sea. If that's not a statement of confidence and determination uh, to reach out, I don't know what is. You were telling me about what the experience of flying here was like. Uh, it was great. It's been a number of years in the making to get to today. So we're very pre pleased and proud to be back at Marham and to bring the four jets home to the UK. And there's been a lot of work that's been going into it in the background over the years from both within the squadron, from our engineers and our support staff, and from around defence as well, to make sure that we can be here today. So we may be the four guys that happen to turn up in the aeroplanes, but there's been a lot of work going on to, uh, to enable us to be here today. Is it a special aircraft, do you think? Very much so. Uh, I'd argue it's one of the uh, best fighters in the world, certainly right now. Um, and uh, from all the work we've been doing in South Carolina, over the years, developing the aeroplane and improving our tactics and the way that we operate the platform, I can certainly say it's been a phenomenal capability that we're bringing back with us. <laughs> <laughs> 